Why no? Your eyes do not deceive you. We're back. On the old set. Remember this? Old season five set, we're back on it. Well, if you've only come into Fragrance Apprentice from season six, this is gonna be all new. But no, this is the old set, and we're gonna be here for at least another month until we transition to a new, new set in a new place, in a new location, which I, I won't get into right now. Anyway, today we're gonna to be doing 10 fragrances that I think are absolute bangers right now. Fragrances that I've been wearing quite considerable amount these past couple months. I think there are two or three that are actually making their debut on this channel, so some new things to talk about. This isn't um, an obvious fragrance apprentice list, um, as obvious as it's been over the past couple of months. There, there is some new and interesting stuff here. So I've got five designers, five niche, and I've got one honorable mention that we'll get into right now. Honorable mention is this. This is Fortitude by Robert Graham. I've really, really enjoyed wearing this. I think it's just so wonderful. Right now, the weather is very topsy-turvy. Today, it's extraordinarily rainy, overcast, not very pleasant. Some days, it's been actually quite sunny and, dare I say it, quite hot. I've been wearing this on the overcast, cool days. This reminds me a little bit of the lavender, grounded, earthy base of Lamel, but with a very, very sophisticated, very rich and very imposing sandalwood that measures it all out. I recommended this to Chris, he liked it, but he thought it was a bit lighter than uh, what I made it out to be. He uh, thought it was gonna be heavier. No, it doesn't really have to be heavy. It's, it's pretty heavy as is, but the sandalwood and the earthy aromatic lavender, that makes it nice and pleasant. The thing that I like about this is that you could wear this in a suit, you could wear this at a formal event. This has an incredibly confident and masculine smell, which I really like. Reason why it's an honorable mention is because it's kind of discontinued. But if you're in the UK and you go to your local Harvey Nichols, there may still be a bottle of this. So check it out. So I'm gonna do five niche, five designers, if that's okay with you. And my number one of each is the one where I'm like, wow, this is absolutely fantastic. Number five of the niche, I suppose, is Tom Ford's tobacco, um, Vanilla Fatal. Not tobacco vanilla. This is kind of like the spiritual successor of Vanilla Fatal. Right, I can do this. Number five is Tom Ford's Vanilla Fatal. It's the spiritual successor of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. Thank God. So this is a lot more luxurious and creamier. This is more on the vanilla with a lot of vanilla sweetness. Tobacco Vanille is, you know, one of the greats of the fragrance world, one of the greatest of all time fragrances. And it takes that wonderful uh, spicy tobacco with the vanilla, with lots of different things going on. This is full-blown vanilla. This is vanilla ice cream served with an incredibly luxurious cognac and caramel with some florals. Kind of feminine, all right? I enjoy these types of more feminine fragrances in the winter. I like that, I can kind of roll with that. For those of you who don't enjoy that and you want your more masculine, leathery, harsher fragrances, woodier, oody fragrances, just stay away, this is not unfortunately going to be for you. Not as appreciated as it truly should be, in my opinion. Number four is Kakik, that's how I pronounce it. Please don't at me in the comments. Kakik, Rainier, wonderful. Georgia really loved this when I showed it to her. Masculine, spicy, woody, bit of oud, but surrounded by many different, it's like you've got oud in the center and then you've got an echelon of fruity dried fruit elements and then an echelon of quite harsh, sandalwood, cedarwood going on. We've also a little bit of kind of cypress. There's, there's something that's green that's tying it all together. Really, really complicated and beautiful composition, but I love it. Think it's great. Lasts an incredible amount of time and the quality is off the charts. Next one, making its debut on the channel. Well, in bottle form, Signature Rose by Zaharoff. Right, this is the best rose I've ever smelled in my life, but there's a caveat to that, which is I'm not really a big rose fan. This is complicated and this is rich and, 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 and high quality. There's a lot going on, a lot of different levels to this. When you put this on, the rose is great and flamboyant and kind of feminine, but then it suddenly is swept off the rug with a couple of woods, but it's kind of like this warm, this is not listed and this is not, I, I don't even think this is what they're going for, but I'm not shitting you. It's like rose and warm, luxurious, buttery, 
popcorn. It's like you're in a movie theater with a wonderful, just like the highest quality, luxurious butter popcorn that you're eating. And there's suddenly a real smell of rich, wonderful rose. So I'm guessing it's kind of like, it's an outdoors cinema. Yeah, it's like an outdoor cinema. Everybody's got popcorn, you can smell all the popcorn. Next to you is like a rose field and it's the middle of spring and the rose is wet and watery. That's what I get from this. I'm still not completely done with it, um, but it's great. It's wonderful and I love it. Hello, for some reason number two did not record, but you probably already know what it is. It's Zerjoff 400. I've been absolutely loving wearing this at the moment. It is absolutely banging. Just that patchouli incense stick smell is fantastic with a lot of great, generous, fluffy, powdery florals that I've been absolutely loving and rocking in the winter time. I showed this to Georgia, she was not too impressed, but I think it's absolutely wonderful. It's kind of like the spiritual successor of Zerjoff Naxos because it does have that tobacco and honey with a lot of different florals and, like I said, a patchouli incense scent. Highly recommend it. I think you should go check it out. Let's go on to my number one. But the number one niche that I'm loving right now, that I'm absolutely, like, it's not the right weather. It's not the right weather for this. But when it becomes warmer, I'm just going to wear the shit out of this. This is, this is going to be in my top three spring. I know it, All right? The name is Unfortunate, especially with what's going on in the world right now because the name of this is Oligarch. This fragrance is my absolute number one niche going into spring. I'll just tell you that. This is Oligarch by Roja, Oligarch Parfum. Okay, so you know there seems to be a lot of recently, suddenly out of nowhere, Hermes, Tour de Hermes is popular again. All the DNA is popular again. Vulgari did their version of Tour de Hermes recently. There's, there's a lot of movement with that DNA. And I like Tour de Hermes, okay? I do, but I find it a little bit too dry and I find it a little bit too earthy sometimes. I'm more of a guy who enjoys sweetness and I like that balance. This has got that and, well, the quality is insane because it's Roja. But this is Tour de Hermes. You ramp it up, you give it a bit of sweetness and you give it a lot of powder and you just get this really welcoming, really pleasant, incredibly enjoyable, kind of innocent smell and it's just lovely and it puts a smile on your face. It brings to mind, you know, the connotations of fields in the middle of spring, sunsets in spring and summer. That's what I get in particular from this. But the quality is magnificent. The performance is fantastic. This is my number one niche heading into spring. I'm going to be wearing the absolute crap out of this. Next one is this, making its debut on the channel is Gucci Guilty Parfum. Okay, mixed response with this. I'll tell you why I bought this actually. I bought this because I hadn't actually ever had a, a Gucci Guilty in my collection, right? I had Absolute, but that's not, that's not Gucci Guilty. That's a very, very different fragrance altogether. And I like the EDT, I like the Eau de Parfum, but I was never inspired enough to actually buy a Gucci Guilty. And so I actually saw a review on Fragrant Jesus's uh, channel about this fragrance and I thought okay Gucci Guilty put up to 11 with some orange and some 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 citruses like blood orange dark and orange and I thought okay that sounds good so I blind bought this the 50 mil I was not blind buying the 100 mil you should not do that it's a lot of money so I did it and good blind buy but I did basically know what I was getting with this and it is essentially what people say that it is it's, it's Gucci Guilty it's turned up it's smoother it's a bit more streamlined I think the only weird thing about it, and I don't know if this is in, in its favour or, or if this is a hindrance, is that this is an older DNA now. This came out in the 2000s, and this smells like a 2000s fragrance. This smells like a fragrance that came out 15 years ago, but amped up. But Gucci Guilty never really had its time. When it came out, it was deemed as generic for the time. But now that it's coming out again, it's kind of not generic because everything's moved on. So it's become unique and, and this can happen. Everything that is old becomes new again eventually. Just look at what's happened with the 1980s. So lovely, really wonderful. I'm enjoying it. Maybe I'm just enjoying the novelty of having a Gucci Guilty in my collection for the first time. Maybe it's just that, but I'm really enjoying this. I would recommend it. I think that the price is going to a point where I would forbid you to buy it. Just saying, it is, it is quite pricey. But I think it's fine and the 50 mil is, is okay, but it's slipping. If it goes any more, don't bother. Number four is, I was wrong. I, I've, I've already said it, you don't have to look at me like that. You don't have to, hey, hey, don't look at me like that. I've already admitted it. I've already admitted it. I was wrong. Le Mans Le Parfum, it's great. 
over the top, sugary nonsense for the most part, but I dig it. I like it in the colder weather. I've enjoyed it. I had a little period a couple of weeks ago where I, I wore it sort of every other day just for a week because I was really, really getting into it, but then I grew tired of it. Okay, it's one of those fragrances where I'm kind of going through some phases with it, but it's great. It's wonderful. I do like it. Okay, this isn't technically a designer, but next one is this. This is Agar by Alexandria, which is kind of like Oud Wood, which is actually my scent of the day today. Oh, it's great. Now look, I can hear you. I know what you're saying. I know, just give me a minute. I know what you're saying. I know what you're all gonna say, but George, Alexandria's a clone house. It's theft. What about your morals? What about your ethics? And I get it, and all I'm gonna say is forgiveness. Just let's not forget what the old sage Mahatma Gandhi said about forgiveness. In fact, I've got it right here. Mahatma Gandhi once said about forgiveness. Bloody hell, love, those are massive. You could milk a bloody crush with them. And I think that what Mahatma Gandhi really meant by that is, look, I know it's Alexandria and I know it's a clone house, but Oud Wood is expensive at the moment. It's a little bit too pricey. And here's my, here's my, here's my deal with Oud Wood and, um, and Alexandria at the moment and this fragrance. Oud Wood and this are pretty much level. And so in the end, I will eventually buy Oud Wood, but at, that, at this time, I was not forking out over 200 quid for 100 milliliter. I was not forking out 160, 170 for 50 mil. I just didn't want to put that investment in Oudwood, so I got this. And this is a fantastic Oudwood clone. I feel mixed about the fact that I'm recommending a clone, but this is true. This is a fragrance that I have been wearing a tremendous amount, as you can actually see there. I think it's banging, it's true. Great Oudwood clone for 30 quid. Astonishing. And now we get to a couple obvious fragrance apprentice choices. Fulgari Man in Black, yes, great, wonderful. Love it. You all know I did a review on it. Wonderful woodsy oriental fragrance with some iris. Just great. It, it rides that lightning bolt of being in between feminine and being in between masculine. Rides that lightning bolt. Not a lot of fragrances in the designer world can actually do that very well. This does that. And that gives you a, a masculine confidence, but it also gives you a sort of a, a feminine sensitivity. And that is this fragrance. That's why I gravitate towards it. That's probably why it's so successful, because it takes that very, very difficult abstract concept and puts it into scent format, and it's wonderful. And number one, well, here we are again, I guess. No, it's not ombre leather, no, but when you see it, you'll be like, oh, right, yeah, that one. Bleu Chanel Parfum. I'm nearly out of this bottle. Wonderful. I can wear this all year. I can wear this in uh, summer, spring, autumn, and I've worn it in winter. You probably can't see, but I'm nearly out. It's there. Balsamic, wonderful, sophisticated, intriguing, just a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. I've done reviews and talks about this loads and loads of times, but it's great. It is super great. Compliment getter, if you're interested, if that's all you care about. Banging compliment getter. All the blue Chanel's are a compliment getter, but for me, Parfum is great, and I've only enjoyed it um, as I've as I've worn it. I've had this for about two, maybe three years now. I have gone through it. That's a that's a fast period of time when you have a lot of fragrances to go through a fragrance. I've just worn it a tremendous amount. Versatile as hell. It's wonderful. Anyway, thank you so much. I'm the Fragrance Brace. Thanks for watching. Bye.